So, now we have a car on space, right? That's nice! But believe me, the launch of Falcon Heavy goes far beyond that. With many goals, many achievements, and especially many easter eggs. Well, just recapping a little bit for those of you guys that have been living in a cave for the past few weeks, we launched a new rocket into space, it's called Falcon Heavy. It was made by SpaceX, a private rocket company founded back in 2002 by Elon Musk, who also happens to be the CEO of Tesla Motors and the founder of X.com, which later became PayPal. One of the main goals that Musk had when he started the company was to reduce the costs of space transportation. Because if you think about it, they used to spend millions and millions making rockets for them to make one travel and that was it, it was over. You couldn't just reuse them because of all the damage they had already and fixing them wasn't worth the money either. So Elon Musk said, okay then guys, we're gonna make cheaper rockets and we're gonna make them reusable so we can send them into space and they're gonna come back to us impeccable and so we can stop wasting our money on single-use rockets. And yeah, that actually took quite some time and quite some money to achieve. <laughs> the long-term goal of the company and Musk essentially couldn't be anything else other than, of course, enabling the colonization of Mars. But although the initial plans for Falcon Heavy were that it was designed to carry humans into space, as of right now, it is not certified, which means it doesn't have the certification saying it's capable of transporting humans. So for right now at least, it's probably just gonna be devoted to launching large satellites into space or space probes. But Elon says they're discussing right now in SpaceX whether they're gonna do the space travel thing with Falcon Heavy itself or with BFR, an even bigger space Scrap, which is stuck for another time. Well, Falcon Heavy's test flight on February 6th was successful, except for some little unplanned details. So after the launch, Falcon Heavy was supposed to go up and then there will be the booster separation, where the boosters will do the flip maneuver and return to land vertically. So far, so good. That actually happened with no problems at all. The middle car, though, instead of landing on, of course, I Still Love You, which is one of SpaceX's drone ships, had some technical problems and yeah, basically just fell in the ocean. And also, it seems like the car is gonna travel a little further than planned before. The initial route was supposed to be close to Mars orbit, but after the third burn, which was stronger than expected, it just kept going. So, alright, now the time has come to talk about the elephant in the room. What's the deal with that car floating through Milky Way now? That's Elon Musk's very own Midnight Cherry Tesla Roadster. And you may be asking yourself, what? why did he do it? Why would someone launch a car into space? It was for a very simple reason, y'all. For fun! And let's not forget that's a pretty freaking good market campaign for both of his companies. So the real question is, why wouldn't he do it? After the launch, the Roadster became not only the first production car to be launched into space, but also the fastest car ever and the car that has traveled the furthest distance ever. And just like many innovative billionaires you can find throughout history, Elon Musk is also a nerd. His social life was much less than my other two kids. And that's a typical nerd. I read all the comics I could buy or that they let me read at the bookstore before chasing me away. I read everything I could get my hands on from when I woke up to when I went to sleep. At one point I got, I, I really ran out of books and started reading the encyclopedia. So he couldn't help but view everything with easter eggs and references to pop culture. So get ready because in the end of this video we're gonna be just like Captain America. I understood that reference. Well, let's start with the name of the rocket, Falcon Heavy. Elon Musk named it after Millennium Falcon, which is Han Solo's ship in one of the most popular and successful franchises of all time, Star Wars. Millennium Falcon is one of the fastest ships in the whole Star Wars universe, and while Falcon Heavy is not the fastest rocket ever, it surely is one of the most powerful ones. Talking about brute force, it only loses to Saturn V, which was the rocket that sent humans to the moon through the Apollo program and took flight for the last time in 1973. Saturn V was able to send 140 tons of material to the low Earth orbit, while Falcon Heavy can only send 64. The billionaire also gave cool names to the company's drone ships. On the Falcon Heavy's test flight, only, of course, I Still Love You was used, but there is also another one called 
just read the instructions. Just read the instructions and of course I still love you are two of the planet sized starships which first appear in a book by Ian Banks called the Player of Games which is part of the Culture series. In the books we're introduced to Culture, a space faring utopian society of humans, aliens and artificial intelligences living across the galaxy. Coincidentally, just a few days ago Amazon acquired the rights to adapt the first book of the series which is called Consider Flibus. Now let's jump to one of my favorite singers of all time, David Bowie, who was responsible for no one, not two, but three of the references. The first one was the astronaut that they put on the roster. According to Musk, that's not a prototype or anything, that's the actual SpaceX suit that people are gonna use on future missions. And the one in the roster was given the name Starman. Also, as Musk said on Twitter, the car is playing Space Oddity in a Loop, which is another one of Bowie's greatest hits. And finally, in the animated trailer of the test fly at the SpaceX Launch Center and on the live stream on the moment the car was released into space, people were able to listen to Life on Mars. Now if you look at the car's dashboard, you can see something little right in the middle. That's a miniature of the roadster made by Hot Wheels with a little Starman put by Musk. Elon Musk talked about it and he said, maybe it'll be discovered by some future alien race thinking, what the heck were these guys doing? Did they worship this car? Why do they have a little car in the car? That will really confuse them. And right under it, you can see a screen saying something too. Don't panic. That's a stray reference from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is one of my favorite books ever. It's already supplanted the Encyclopedia Galactica as the standard repository of all knowledge and wisdom for two important reasons. First, it's slightly cheaper, and second, it has the words Don't Panic printed in large, friendly letters on its cover. That was not the only Hitchhiker's Guide easter egg. Musk replied to someone on Twitter and he said that he also included a copy of the guide in the glovey box along with a towel, which, according to the guide, is about the most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can have. They also included an arch storage system containing Isaac Asimov's Foundation book series. An arch is a 5D laser optical quartz storage device made by the Arch Mission Foundation to be able to survive even in the harsh conditions of space. The Foundation series is about a man who projects the future of mankind, establishes a long-term plan for the progress of human civilization, and is viewed as a legendary savior for the entire course of human history as a result of that. Sounds familiar? Short after the car was already in space, Musk posted a new photo on Instagram and said, printed on the circuit board of a car in deep space. And if you look at the photo, you can see that they printed it on the circuit board made on Earth by humans. If aliens ever find it, I really do hope they speak English. They also had the names of more than 6,000 SpaceX employees engraved onto a plaque mounted on the payload attached fitting, which was the structure that held the roadster onto the second stage of Falcon Heavy. But that's it, people. We really hope you enjoyed the first video here on Dragonverse. If you're curious and want to know where the roadster is right now, you can check the website whereisroadster.com. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't lose any new video. Thanks for watching and remember, never stop wondering, because in 1964, people wonder if we would ever have flying cars, and in 2018, that's our reality.